All right, let's get to some of the more fun stuff because right now it has been a little bit, uh, well, material based and orientation based, but I think most of you guys are here for the geometry nodes, really, right? So <laughs> let's just take a look at the good old, um, uh, let's see, let's go to geometry nodes first. All right, and we are now having a repeat zone. All right, there we go. To do so, we first need an object. Let's hit Shift A, Mesh Cube, and let's create a new geometry node setup. And we can convert this now into a repeat zone, right? And a repeat zone, the way we add that, and this is where I question the choices of Blender for a sec. If we now hit Shift A, I would also always be able to just hit Search, Shift A, Search, and then Search for whatever I need, but they removed the Search function. Yeah, that is something that uh, I have to get used to. You can now hit Shift A, and you can start typing the letters that you want. So Shift A, and then Simulation Zones will be S, and Shift A, and then I don't know where the Repeat Zone is. So what I do instead is a little hack press F3 and just search it here, repeat zone, <laughs> there we go. It's a little bit of a detour, but we're getting to the same, the same thing, right? So repeat zone, there we go. And so this is different than, let's search for a simulation zone, the simulation zone. They look the same, but one is pink and one is orange and they do something completely different, all right? And so the repeat zone won't really give you any type of simulation, you won't really be able to get that to work. So how you have to see the repeat zone is as something that will repeat a set of actions and specifically the set of actions that is located in this repeat zone section, right? So if you connect this and this, nothing happens because we still have the same mesh. But if we hit Shift A and we search for the transform node, let's press F3 instead the transform geometry and swipe that in between. And if we now set the translation into the Y direction to, for example, 0.1 meters, maybe make that a bit bigger, one meters, you can see that it just moves our object to the side a little bit, right? So it does that one time. So it performs this action one time, all right? And if you want this to happen more often, we can crank this up pretty much, all right? And it will just, move it more iterations, right? So you can animate that value and you can animate your object if you want. Going from left to right, that is something that you, um, oh, you may need. Um, but the real fun comes in when we add a joint geometry node, all right? Because we want to show the entire process of the repeat zone. So iteration one, iteration two, three, four, five. We want the result of every single one of those. So let's press F3 and search for our join geometry. And swipe that there. And let's add our first nodes in here. And now you can see that we actually visualize every single repetition there, right? So every distance, every translation we can now visualize. And now if we add a little bit of a rotation, it is getting even more interesting, all right? So we can screw things, we can bend things, we can perform all kinds of actions, like we can rotate this around. And this is very, very nice to actually animate. So we can do the same with scaling, right? So if you scale everything down, you can see we're making something like a rattlesnake tail already, that easy. And we can animate this, rotating every axis we want, like folding in, folding out. And you can use this very easily to create array kind of patterns that are going to be a little bit trickier than the general array modifier, all right? And what you can do as well now is add another transform geometry node in this first section. So hit Shift A or F3, I have to get used to that, and search for another transform geometry, swipe that in here. And now if we add another rotation, you can see that we're adding more objects. And the reason why is because if we set this to zero, it is actually creating more inputs for every iteration that we get. It's creating more geometry than what we have actually. And we should be able to visualize that by creating a new window and setting this to be the spreadsheet. We can now see how many objects we are actually creating. And we can see three, four, five, six objects 
and is actually making a lot more, right? So if you scroll down, you can see we have a lot of stuff going on and well, it is just a lot more than we want, right? So if we rotate this, you can see that those objects are now appearing, all right? And you can see that it is very interesting to just play around with it and create different kind of shapes and a different kind of, um, well, pretty much scenes, I guess, because if this gets large very quickly. You can see this if I crank this up a few times, it is getting exponentially bigger and bigger and bigger. And that is quite chaotic, but you can see that we can create very interesting VFX particle systems, stuff like that this way very quickly and very easily. Rotate it around, we get some kind of like a tornado thingy, I guess. So this is very, very interesting stuff, but it requires a little bit of thinking through what happens, especially when you're going to combine this with a simulation zone, which is possible.